From worst football injuries to longest suspensions, here are the most brutal fouls in football that caused huge controversies. Thomas Mueller on Nicholas Tagliafico, 2018. Let's open the video with 2018's UEFA Champions League match between Bayern Munich and Ajax Amsterdam. In the 75th minute of the game, where every player was putting in their best efforts to secure the ball, Mueller tried to reach a long pass with a high kick, but completely failed to see Nicholas eagerly diving to head the ball. The studs of Munich's forward hit the Ajax player squarely in the face, causing a laceration. The player got patched up immediately on the field, but it was straight red card for Mueller. Later on, Mueller officially apologized to Nicholas for his brutal kick, but it's no match for our number one on this list, where the victim had to be escorted out of the field. Before that, we have this next foul incident in which the police had to get involved. So, Ben Thatcher on Pedro Mendes, 2006. Back in 2006, the Premier League clash between Manchester City and Portsmouth saw one of the most horrible tackles in football history. The player involved in the foul was Ben Thatcher, who delivered a brutal elbow to Portsmouth's Pedro Mendes. In the second half of the game, Portsmouth had just defended a corner and the ball was heading away. As Mendes moved to the right back position to clear the ball, in came Thatcher with an extremely late challenge. The elbow was aimed at Mendes' head and resulted in the Portsmouth player losing consciousness he had to be stretched off the field and was hospitalized due to the severity of the impact. But what did the match referee, Dermot Gallagher, do? He just gave a yellow card to Ben. Football fans were outraged, and they kept writing to the Greater Manchester Police, which resulted in police speaking with Mendez to see if he wanted to seek legal action. Well, Mendez did not have to do anything as Manchester City decided to suspend their player indefinitely and fined him two weeks' wages as a punishment. But what should be the punishment of a player who intentionally tries to end someone's career? Roy Keane on Alf Ing Holland, 2001. During a Manchester Derby in 2001, Manchester United's Roy Keane made a harsh tackle on Alf Ing Holland of Manchester City. This resulted in a serious knee injury for Holland and a premature end to his career. But even more shocking was the fact that Keane had intentionally sought revenge for an incident that had occurred several years earlier. Back in 1997, Holland stood over Keane during a match against Man United at Leeds, moaning at the Irishman for faking an injury when he had actually ruptured his ACL. Keane took the opportunity to retaliate by hitting him hard in the right leg with no ball seen anywhere near the two players. He was immediately given a red card. Roy mentioned this incident in his controversial 2002 autobiography, where he said, I'd waited long enough. I effing hit him hard. The ball was there, think. Take that, you C-word. And don't ever stand over me sneering about fake injuries. While he was originally fined 5,000 pounds and banned for three matches, the comments in his book got him another 150,000 pound fine and five match ban for suggesting it was intentional and profiting via sales. But do you know a player who took his tackler and his coach to the court? Norbert Siegman on Ewald Lienen, 1981. So back in 1981, there was this wild football match between VFL Bochum and Werder Berman. Ewald Lienen from Bochum got wrecked by a tough tackle from Norbert Siegmann of Werder Berman, leaving cuts on his thigh. There's no way I can show you those graphic images of a 10-inch deep slit in his thigh caused by Norbert Studs, exposing his muscles and femur. Some people call it the worst injury in football history. Lienen bounced back in four weeks, but decided to take things to court, suing Siegmann and their coach, Otto Rehagel. He claimed the coach pushed his players to pull that nasty foul. The court didn't buy it, but the whole drama caught everyone's eye in the media. In the next match, Rehagel showed up wearing a bulletproof vest on the bench because apparently he got death threats. Many people say Rehagel lost it, but do you know who actually lost it on the field when his sister was discussed nastily by an opposing player? Zinedine Zidane on Marco Matarazzi, 2006. While French midfield maestro Zinedine Zidane wasn't exactly famous for being an aggressive player, he lost his cool and calm persona in his last professional match against Italy. 
During the 2006 World Cup Final, France and Italy were facing each other, and of course, the game was heated. Italian defender Marco Materazzi was provoking Zidane, which resulted in him headbutting Materazzi in the chest. The incident occurred in extra time, with Zidane exiting with a red card. France was left with 10 players. Italy went on to win the match in a penalty shootout, but Zidane's headbutt remains one of the most iconic moments in football history. Zidane was quoted as saying in an interview later, He provoked me by talking about my sister Lila. I'm not proud of it, but it's part of my career. At that time, I was more fragile. He didn't insult my mother, but he did insult my sister. Football fans remember this legendary player because of this headbutting, and a player because he stopped breathing on the ground. Abu Dhabi on John Terry, 2007. Yes, many of us know John Terry is a strong defender, but the 2007 League Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea saw him getting the worst out of his fearlessness. During the second half of the match, the score was tied at one. Chelsea got an attacking corner, and Terry threw himself at the ball with a diving header. The worst mistake he could make there. Arsenal's Abu Dhabi, in an attempt to clear the ball, ended up kicking Terry in the face. Things got pretty intense for the Chelsea player as he remained unconscious for several minutes, at which point he nearly swallowed his tongue, stopped breathing, and needed immediate treatment on the field. He was knocked out cold, but luckily he recovered, and Chelsea won as well. So all was deemed well because the end was well. But do we consider it a foul if the aggression is committed on a football fan instead of a player? Well, if yes, then we definitely have a bummer here. Eric Cantona on Crystal Palace Fan, 1995. Famous for his aggressive game, MU's Eric Cantona, in a game against Crystal Palace, did something no one could believe. A Crystal Palace fan was taunting him, and Cantona responded with a crazy kung fu kick and tackled him. His track record of getting aggressive on the field had already given him a tough reputation, but this incident just made things worse. The punishment was no joke. He got banned from playing for eight months and had to pay a 20,000 pound fine. That's quite some suspension, but I believe the next player could have had more than this one's. Joey Barton on Sergio Aguero, 2012. I didn't know a player could make so many fouls in a single match, but the final match of the 2011-2012 Premier League season saw the violent outburst of Joey Barton. He elbowed Sergio Aguero and kicked out at other players, which resulted in an immediate red card and a lengthy suspension of 12 matches. Joey Barton's violent outburst occurred while he was playing for Queen's Park Rangers, and the opponent team in that match was Manchester City. Barton has had a history of disciplinary issues, but he isn't the only player to make headlines due to his aggression. Ashley Barnes on Nemanja Matic, 2015. Ashley Barnes, though not previously known for extreme fouls, was all over the media, all thanks to this dangerous tackle on Nemanja Matic. But this time, the tackled player was no victim, as Matic also pushed Barnes to the ground. The incident involving Ashley Barnes and Nemanja Matic occurred on February 21, 2015, during a Premier League match between Burnley and Chelsea. In the 70th minute of the game, Barnes made a tackle on Matic that was widely criticized for its severity. The challenge resulted in Matic reacting angrily, and he pushed Barnes to the ground. The tackle was really dangerous, and resulted in Matic receiving a red card for his reaction, while Barnes escaped without further punishment during the match. But what should happen to someone whose foul literally shatters someone's bones? Martin Taylor on Eduardo Da Silva, 2008. So back in 2008, there was this incident between Martin Taylor and Eduardo Da Silva that really shook up the football world. I think what you can understand first that Taylor's not run against Taylor, who wasn't known for playing rough, made a mistimed tackle that ended up causing a really bad leg injury for Eduardo in a Birmingham City vs. Arsenal match. It was a tough situation. Eduardo had to go through surgery in a long recovery. This hit instantly resulted in his tibia and fibula being fractured. The shattered bones ruptured the tissue of his standing leg, and the force of impact dislocated his ankle. 
After surgery and a year on the sidelines, the player came back with two goals on his opening game, but was never quite the same. Taylor, who wasn't someone who was usually made those kinds of fouls, was discussed a lot, but didn't face a lot of backlash. Well, sometimes it's the referees who have to endure all the criticisms, like in our next entry. Nigel De Jong on Xabi Alonso, 2010. The 2010 FIFA World Cup between the Netherlands and Spain saw Dutch midfielder Nigel De Jong committing a high studs up challenge on Spain's Xabi Alonso. De Jong's foot made contact with Alonso's chest, and the severity of the challenge raised concerns. Howard Webb, the match referee, gave De Jong a yellow card, but given how foul that foul was, it should have been a straight red. Despite the dangerous nature of the tackle, the yellow card to De Jong was widely criticized for being too lenient, but our next referee was quick to hand down a red card, given how brutal the tackle was. Ryan Shawcross on Aaron Ramsey, 2010. The infamous incident involving Ryan Shawcross and Aaron Ramsey took place on February 27, 2010, during a Premier League match between Stoke City and Arsenal. In the 78th minute, Shawcross made a tackle on Ramsey that resulted in a gruesome injury. Shawcross's challenge was deemed reckless, and the impact led to a double fracture of Ramsey's leg. The severity of the injury prompted immediate concern, and Ramsey had to be stretchered off the pitch. The incident shocked both players and spectators, and Ryan Shawcross received a straight red card for the tackle. Harold Schumacher on Patrick Battiston, 1982. Imagine a hit so hard that you have to be escorted out of the field on a stretcher, and there are no repercussions for the player. This happened in the 1982 FIFA World Cup semifinal between West Germany and France. Goalkeeper Harold Schumacher collided violently with French defender Patrick Battiston. Schumacher's reckless tackle occurred outside the penalty area as Battiston was chasing a through ball. Schumacher, coming off his line, jumped and collided with Battiston, hitting him with his hip and elbow. The impact was so hard that Battiston lost consciousness, suffered damaged vertebrae, and lost two teeth. The French player had to be stretchered off the field, and this incident became infamous for its severity and the apparent lack of any disciplinary action against Schumacher, who continued to play in the match. What? But one action was definitely taken, and it was against the studs that caused massive lacerations to football players. Want to know more? Click on this Banned Things in Football to find out more.